Electroculture is a method of harnessing atmospheric electricity to increase plant growth. So I first heard about electroculture from a random video that popped up from a channel called Cultivate Elevate. From there, I went to videos by a guy named uh, Yannick Van Duren, and he has a channel called Yannick VD. And uh, for anything I'm talking about here, there'll be links in the description and you can go check out their channels. I highly recommend you check out Yannick's channel. There's just an endless amount of info on there and some history about electroculture. Now we live in a river valley in the foothills of the Central Cascades. So uh, this is not an optimal place to do electroculture because there's a umbrella effect where the energy and electricity kind of goes over the trees and down. And so if there's obstacles in the way, I might not be getting uh, the full effect. So I'm going to try it anyway because I really want to dig into this. And then later, I think I'll make some magnetic antennas and those will, uh, you know, maybe those won't be affected so much by the atmospheric uh, issues that we have here. All right, there's my idea so far, but I only had one nut and bolt and lock washer. I need another one down here. Then the plan is to drill four holes, stick these in there. These are uh, uh, galvanized. All right, well, I finally built my first electroculture antenna. Now this is a combination atmospheric and magnetic. The atmospheric part of it is these wires and the copper uh, spooled kind of coiled wire. And then the magnetic part is this steel piece that faces directly south. Now uh, putting this thing together was uh, kind of tricky. I ended up putting the thicker galvanized wire, drilling holes in the copper pipe so I could get those in there, then cinched them down with the hose clamp then I ran the thinner galvanized wire kind of through the hose clamp and into a hole you can't really see under there and then hose clamp that. I had that hose clamp right there because I only had one nut and bolt and lock washer so I put that at the bottom because then I can hook a wire to that uh, nut there. So anyway that's the that's what it looks like. The next step is to go up into the garden. This is going to go onto rebar. The bottom of that will fit onto some rebar. I got to get the rebar as high up in the air as possible. So I'll probably hook it to a four by four so I can get up high and then run a wire down uh, the rebar and it goes into the hoop house, the greenhouse. And then going to experiment with that. Before I go up to the greenhouse and set up the pole for the antenna, I went up to our trailer property where we're doing the tiny home and this was connected to the trailer this uh, old wire so I'm gonna strip a bunch of this off there get a bunch of that copper wire to use for uh, from the antenna down the pole I'm gonna run it into the greenhouse along the top ridge beam of the greenhouse and then run copper wire down Rudy run copper wire down to the tomato plants and have the tomato plants climb those. We did string last year, but I saw um, Dean from Arcopia was talking about having the tomatoes climb on copper wire with an electroculture system. I thought that was pretty brilliant. Electroculture gardening has been around for a long time. This book shows patents by Justin Christoflu from 1865 to 1938. He created all kinds of antennas and he actually sold his antennas for a while. All right, this one is turning out pretty cool. Got the copper coil and then copper wire that goes up through the coil and I'll spread all that out so it's kind of fanning out. Then I've got a couple of copper wires and the 
steel galvanized wire. Now we'll uh, hose clamp that together and hammer the copper to hold it together and we'll fan it all out and uh, see what that looks like. A few important things to take note of. If you're making a spiral and you're in the northern hemisphere, the spiral should wind clockwise. Now it's kind of confusing. It's like, how do I know if that's clockwise? Well, you turn it kind of uh, facing you and you'll see that it's winding clockwise. The other thing to take note of is if you're making a magnetic antenna, the pointed end uh, should be pointing due south. And the back of it where you hook the wire, that is facing north. So get yourself a compass, line up that point to the south, and uh, that's where you need to be. I'm trying one of these direct connect to the rebar with a uh, hose clamp. and So getting them all lined up is kind of tricky. I finally did it. I'm going to tighten that up. And then uh, I'll show you what, what kind of design I have planned with this one. All right, there it is. So this one will be in a pot and uh, I like this design too. It's a little more difficult attaching them to a rebar with a hose clamp, but uh, it's worth it. Looks kind of cool and uh, yeah. Here's another one with copper wire, galvanized wire, this galvanized little fence piece and copper wiring from the trailer to make a little fanned out thing there, receptor. So that's the collection so far. That one, we got that guy, that one, that one. It's just attaching wire to this piece of copper. I had to kind of flatten it a little so I could Get that copper wire around it. I got a pretty good spool here. Should uh, take care of what I need to do up there. All right, so I'm up here at the garden, and uh, I don't know. This uh, I've got trees all around me. Now it does open up over this way. I'm gonna try it anyway, but I think. Uh, have much better results if it was in a area with uh, kind of flat not a ton of trees everywhere but anyway I'm gonna try putting it right over here close to the hoop house that way I can run the wire down inside and like I said I'm gonna run it along this beam here we are gonna replace this plastic so I just got to keep that in mind when I'm running wire through here right, let's get digging Okay, measured that. It's sitting eight feet out of the ground, and then uh, I figure I'll have to put the rebar up about two feet down just to keep it somewhat stable. So it'll be 16 feet high, which isn't too bad. We'll attach the antenna now. Now the metal piece for the magnetic part of that antenna is supposed to be uh, somewhat magnetized. I did put a magnet on it for a little while, but uh, in the end, I went up a few days later and attached a magnet to the back 
of the uh, bolt and nut that the wire is screwed to. That way there is a permanent uh, magnetic force up there. So hopefully that works. For a little control uh, for this experiment, I've got these two tomato plants and these two tomato plants, and I've run a copper wire to this one, and there's not one in that one. I've got a wire in this one and not in that one, so we'll kind of see how those go over the months. And then we've got this, the English cucumber, we got four of them, and I've put the wire in that one and the wire in this one. The other thing we did is we ran over to these, to uh, this butternut squash. We'll see how that does. There's really no control for that. We have some outside, but I just wanted to see if it, if I notice anything. And then we've got our pawpaw, and I figured anything we can do to help that, we'll do that. And out here in the garden, of course, I have the, the big antenna, the atmospheric and the magnetic antenna, and then it leads down into there, of course. And then I've got a wire coming over here. This is just a galvanized piece of like some uh, cattle panel type stuff. There's another line like this buried in the ground. So the copper wire is hooked to that just to see what happens. And then I've got a galvanized and copper little thing I put together here, kind of like the uh, earth battery type of thing and we'll just see if that does anything. Then we've got this one, this antenna, and that is going into some broccoli right down there. And I saw in one of Yannick's videos, a lady did this where she put this around and it created like this energy field, I guess, but she saw great results with that. So figured I'd give that a try. And then we have in our potatoes, this one. We have this antenna that's on our grape trellis. And that antenna goes down, the rebar goes into the ground, and then we've got it connected here with some copper wire and connected here to the copper wire. That's what we have going on up here so far. Like I said, I'm gonna add some magnetic antennas and then I do wanna add some Fibonacci uh, wrapped wire spirals in different pots. And the last antenna is this one that's down by our chicken coop. This one runs down to our pawpaw tree and I've got it split off. One wire going to the cage and one wire going to a piece of copper into the ground to the roots of the pawpaw tree. All right, so that was the pawpaw tree. Um, we'll see over the months how this works out and I'll do updates an update video here when I you know maybe I'll wait a month and then do an update video and if none of this works out up here for us I still kind of like it because it's it kind of has that old world look it's kind of like garden art so no loss if uh, we don't see any results all right thanks for watching and we'll see you next time